Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I've got yet another graphics card review for you today. We have the brand new AMD Radeon RX 7600, which is going to retail for a very reasonable sounding $270. So that's obviously a fair bit cheaper than a lot of stuff we've seen recently. It's also a lot cheaper than the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti, which we saw launched yesterday. You can see a review of that card in the banner up above. But I think what's pretty clear here today is that we're not going to see what many have been hoping, and that is AMD kind of killing the 4060 Ti because we're dealing with a much cheaper and less powerful card here. We are probably going to have to wait for the RTX 4060 to launch in July to see a real head-to-head -head because that card is going to retail for around $300 whereas the Radeon RX 7600 is retailing for around $270. So those cards pretty close in, pri in price, but there is $130 between this card and the RTX 4060 Ti. So what we'll be looking at today is comparing this card with the 4060 Ti and a whole bunch of other cards, including the RTX 3060, 3060 Ti, uh, RX 6750 XT, and a whole bunch of other things as well to see just where this card fits in the market is it great in its in its own right stomping all over nvidia or is it disrupting the lower end of the market making things more affordable hopefully we might see some rtx 3060 price cuts and those kind of things but we'll have to wait and see in the video so first though a word from my sponsor our sponsor today is scdkey.com, where right now you can get great deals on software such as Windows 10, Windows 11, and Microsoft Office. And even better is I've got a 25% discount code to share with you guys. Windows 10 Professional, for example, which is fully upgradable for free to Windows 11. All you have to do is click buy now, enter the code CRT25 into the promotion code box, click apply, and the US price will drop from $22.09 down to just $16.57, and in the UK, you'll see the price fall to just £12.79. Once you've paid, head over to your order page, click the get key button, and copy your Windows key code. When you're in Windows, you wanna move your mouse over to the start button, right click, go to settings, then update and security, and then move up to activation and finally click on change your product key, copy and paste your brand new product key into the box, click next, then click activate and your Windows 10 installation is now activated. You can do the exact same thing with Office 2021 Professional, CRT 25, click apply and you will see a hefty discount. Thanks again to SCD Key for sponsoring today's video. So in terms of our test system, we have the beautiful Cosmo here today, one of my uh, pair of test systems, and we have an NZXT N7Z790 motherboard, along with a Core i9-12900K processor from Intel under the hood with 32 gigabytes of 6000 megahertz DDR5 memory. So in terms of specifications, we should probably compare the RX 7600 against the RX 6600, first of all. And we have a slightly smaller manufacturing process, so 6 nanometers versus 7 nanometers. There are a lot more transistors at 13 billion, billion versus 11 billion. We have a slightly smaller die size though at around 204 millimeters squared versus 237 millimeters squared. Compute units, there's been a slight bump as has there been in the ray accelerators. And there's around 200 more stream processors as well as a slightly higher gain boost and slightly higher boost frequency. So we what we still have though is the same 128-bit memory bus and the same 8 gigabytes of memory. Now moving on to the comparisons with other Radeon uh, RX 70, 7000 series products, we've got a gaping hole between the RX 6, uh, 7600 and the RX 7900 XT. So any kind of comparison here is pretty stupid because the latter cost $900, whereas the card that we're looking at today cost just 269. So obviously the 7900 XT having a lot more memory at, two, at 20 gigabytes. You've also got a much wider 320 bit memory bus and uh, you've, you've got a need for two eight pin power connectors as well, but you only have one or need for one on the RX 7600. So there shouldn't be any need to upgrade your power supply, not least of all because we're dealing with a 165 watt TDP graphics card here. So that's it for this part of the video. Let's move on to the benchmarks. The first benchmark is Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p with ultra settings and ray tracing enabled. And the RX 7600 easily outstripping the RTX 3060 
and coming close to matching the RTX 3060 Ti. So it's a pretty good result here for AMD. Stepping up to 1440p and it's pretty much the same picture, the RTX 3060 Ti does have slightly more of a lead, mainly on the average frame rate, but the RTX 3060 again sitting well behind the RX 7600. Next up is Rainbow Six Extraction and it was a great result here for the RX 7600, outstripping the RTX 3060 Ti's minimum 99th percentile, although the Nvidia card did manage a slightly higher average frame rate. However, again, the RTX 3060 being put well and truly in its place. Stepping up to 1440p and again the RX 7600 was able to keep pace with the RTX 3060 Ti and offer a decent amount extra performance over the RTX 3060. Moving on to Halo Infinite then and this is a game that generally prefers Nvidia cards and here it's no surprise to see the RX 7600 only managing to match the RTX 3060 while the RTX 3060 Ti offered a much much higher average frame rate. Stepping up to 1440p and it was pretty much the same story, although here the RX 7600 did offer a, a much larger lead over the RTX 3060 which seemed to struggle at this resolution. Our next game is a Far Cry 6 and at 1080p again we see the RX 7600 closely matching the RTX 3060 Ti and offering a decent amount more performance than the RTX 3060, but if you wanted a graph that showed how much more powerful the RTX 4060 Ti is, this is the one you get a whole lot more performance, and of course the card costs a whole lot more as well. Stepping up to 1440p in Far Cry 6, and as this game supports FSR, I enabled it in this resolution to see what kind of a difference it makes. Out of the box, the RX 7600 easily outpaces the RTX 3060 but slips behind the RTX 3060 Ti. Enabling FSR though massively increases the frame rate so it actually beats the RTX 4060 Ti and RX 6750 XT as well. So decent amount extra performance from FSR but if you don't want to use that you'll be looking at performance somewhere between the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti. Moving on to the RX 7600 and we have a pretty good result for AMD here. The minimum 99 percentile and average frame rates closely matching and slightly bettering the RTX 3060 Ti and way out ahead of the RTX 3060 so it's a great result for AMD here. Dialing things up to 1440p though and things start to get a little trickier and even the RX 6750 XT is struggling here with both cards falling away behind the RX the RTX 3060 Ti, however again the RX 7600 offering a decent amount extra performance than the RTX 3060. Moving on to Flight Simulator then and we have the RX 7600 just about landing in the bottlenecked area which is hindered by other parts of the system and avoiding the drop off which was seen with the RTX 3060. So if you want to play this game at 1080p then you'll be seeing pretty good frame rates. Moving on to 1440p and we have a slightly less favourable result but still one that is miles faster than the RTX 3060 in this game. However, the RTX 3060 Ti did prove to be noticeably quicker. An extra test I like to run in Flight Simulator is to enable FSR or DLSS as both are enabled in this game. Whacking things up to 4K and seeing how cards perform. I wouldn't normally do this with low-end cards such as these. Uh, because that's running games at 4K is just not what they're designed for, but it provides some interesting comparisons. So out of the box, the RX 7600 actually managed playable frame rates with a minimum 99 percentile of 26 frames per second, an average of 29, sitting between the RTX 3060 Ti and, you guessed it, the RTX 3060 at the bottom of the graph. However, disappointingly, FSR actually saw the frame rate drop, and this was in balance mode, which should, in theory, provide a small performance increase but that's not what happened here, things actually regress slightly. So I'm just guessing that this game just isn't, isn't particularly optimized for FSR or there's some kind of other bug in there because uh, when, I enable, when I don't enable it, I'm actually getting faster frame rates and FSR did seem to offer benefits further up the stack with other uh, Radeon 7000 series GPUs. Our final game test then is Watch Dogs Legion and at 1080p with DXR enabled it wasn't a great result for the RX 7600 with it struggling to deal with the ray tracing in this game which isn't something new for AMD cards they have often struggled here and uh, obviously not a great result sitting well below the RTX 3060. 
stepping up to 4K and things kind of got worse with the RTX 3060 offering nearly double the frame rates of the RX 7600 at this resolution. Another test where the RX 7600 didn't perform particularly well was in the power consumption, drawing as 272 watts, just one watt less than the RTX 4060 in our system as a whole, and that's obviously not a great result considering that the RTX 4060 Ti offered a whole lot more performance. The RTX 3060 was only just behind, obviously getting outstripped by the AMD card in most tests, but again, that's a generation old architecture, so we can't draw too many conclusions from that. Obviously, this is a fairly cool running card anyway, but it's just a shame not to see the same efficiency that we're seeing from the green team at this end. So what do we make of the AMD running on RX 7600 then? Well, I think while this graphics card is very reasonably priced. We have to kind of put it into context with the other load of graphics cards out there at the moment. And I think given what we've seen today is that this is not an RTX 4060 Ti competitor. It's way cheaper, but it also offers a heck of a lot less performance. So we're going to have to wait till July to get the RTX 4060 to see just how this graphics card compares. So it's a bit of a shame that we don't have a real head to head today, given that the 4060 Ti only launched yesterday. That would have been Pretty interesting from a head-to-head -head point of view, but that's just not what is going on here. So yes, it's cheaper, but you get a lot less performance because of it. What this card is going to do though, hopefully, fingers crossed, is to see some big price, re uh, price reductions at the lower end of the market, mainly with Nvidia's cards such as the RTX 3060, which costs, well, I couldn't find anything below $300 for that card on places like Amazon and Newegg, but this card undercutting it, fingers crossed, again, as I say, when, when it hits shop shelves, it should give you plenty of change from $300 for the basic models out there. So the fact that it's cheaper and often outdoes the RTX 3060 in games, especially when it comes to just plain old rasterization, with a few specific titles in mind, like Forza and Far Cry 6. And that's really going to put the pressure on NVIDIA, as I say, to drop the prices of those stubbornly high um, costs of the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti. Now, obviously, there are lots of things to consider here. You have other AMD cards out there as well, but there isn't really anything in this price bracket offering this kind of performance. Um, and if you want to go for more money, you might get more memory. For example, with the uh, RX 6750, with its um, with its more memory, and the and the 7, uh, 6700 with the with its 10 gigabytes of memory as well, you're getting a little bit more memory than this card. And I know that's a contentious topic at the moment with NVIDIA dropping the 4060 Ti with its tiny 128 bit memory bus and 8 gigabytes of memory. This card has a similar specification, but it obviously costs a lot less. So if you're a 1080p gamer and you're happy with you know playable frame rates at 1080p and very high or maximum settings in most games, this card is very, very appealing. However, obviously, we have some other stuff coming that's just around the corner in maybe just as little as six or seven weeks, namely the RTX 4060, which is going to retail for $300. So while this card is going to be very disruptive at the lower end of the market, what I would want to see is a review of this card versus the RTX 4060 before I part ways with, with my money. So that's my overview of today. It's not a direct competitor for the RTX 4060 Ti. I don't think we were really expecting it to be to be looking at the pricing and the, and the specifications. But what we have here is a very solid sub $300 graphics card, which is hopefully going to be relatively disruptive at the low end as well with previous generation stuff. So hopefully lower prices on the way, but watch out for the RTX 4060, which is landing in just a few weeks, because that is the card that I want to see this pitched against before I reach for my wallet if I was in the market for a new $300 graphics card. That's it from me today. Don't forget to like and comment on this video. That just means that you enjoy my videos and it means a lot to have your support and means that I can do more things like this video and other stuff. Lots of things coming on the channel. Lots of things that I'm working on as well. And don't forget our weekly or regular uh, videos as well in the lab, which covers all the things that I've got coming up and all the things, all the exciting things that I've got in the lab as well as some previews for you guys. So don't forget to check out those regular in the lab videos for my new regular series. That's it from me though. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you soon.